Hey everybody, Ann here, sitting in the tiny house, having my coffee with all of you, and today I'm going to start the cheese, and it takes like three days, so at the end I'll probably compile a bunch of it together and put it on my uh, cooking and preserving list, but I'm going to get it started today. Hello beautiful chickens, what's up Romeo, <laughs> looks like your comb is all better, this eyeball's good. I wish you'd turn around and let me see your other eyeball. <laughs> he won't do it because he's looking at me through his only good eyeball. Hey, Roxy, stop terrorizing Mama the leghorn. Look at Miss Beauty. She's putting more and more weight on that leg. It's almost like it's, I don't know, healing? So Cayenne is not back here with her anymore. And I'll talk to you about that. Uh, towards the end of the video. She didn't die. <laughs> She's doing very, very good. And so is Beauty. You know what? I'm just going to call him Danny Filth. Cradle of Filth Rooster. Because he sings like that. Danny. Danny Phil. See what I mean? <laughs> Both of those photos I took, by the way. There was one more. Um, I went back to the web archive and I couldn't pull it up. I couldn't find it. It was the most perfect, perfect picture of Danny Filth up on stage at OzFest. I think it was 2003. I had a photo pass and I got to uh, photograph the bands up on stage and I was right in front of the stage and he's just like ah, like that Anyhow, yeah, I took those photos myself not the best. I was still learning how, how to like use a SLR camera, but yeah <laughs> And Romeo sounds just like him. Don't you think so? Let's get this cheese started Making dream cheese is easy. It only has three ingredients two are shown here salt and plain Whole milk, yogurt, no flavorings, no additives. Make sure it has active cultures in it because that's super important. And some cheesecloth. Or you could use a plain white, very clean t-shirt. This is organic cheesecloth, unbleached. It has, uh, I think it's been pre-washed. Um, and it's really good. It, the, the pores are very fine. So nothing will get through except for the whey. So I'm using two quarts. And there's the second quart. There you go. It's all in there. It fit. I'm super great. Oh, and that's just a colander over a bowl. So now all you got to do is bring it together and, well, just secure it and make a little sack out of it. Then tie it up with some twine or some uh, kitchen string or whatever. I didn't have kitchen string, so I'm just using twine. There's a little loopy thing you can do, but I couldn't remember how to do it. I'll, I'll research that and do it on the next one so you don't have to keep tying it. And It's kind of like a slip knot sort of a thing, but I forgot how to do it. So I'm just tying it up just like this. And this little rack that uh, Selena, Mr. Lucas' uh, daughter-in-law gave me is the perfect solution. I just hang it from up there with a keychain ring over a bowl and the whey is going to drip down in there. I'm just going to let it hang there for 24 hours. Time to do the next step. So I'm just going to cut it down from there and pour off the whey. I've already poured off a lot of it and I've got quite a bit of whey in there. Doesn't it look like lemonade? Yeah? People make a, a drink out of this. So now let's just cut this thing open and see what our beginning cheese looks like on the inside. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look delicious? You could eat it right now, probably. 
And then just scrape off any cheese that's adhering to the sides of the cheesecloth or your t-shirt, whatever it is you're going to use. I do not recommend using the cheesecloth that you can get from like a craft store or Walmart or whatever because it's almost unusable. You have to just layer it up and it's just not as easy to work with. So now I'm going to add the salt. And the recipe calls for one teaspoon of salt per quart of yogurt. So I'm just going to put the first teaspoon in and then mix it up and add the second one later. And now for the second teaspoon. I'm just going to sprinkle it all over and then mix it in real good. Now it's time to tie the bag up again. Yep, I'm using the same cheesecloth throughout the whole process. Just get your twine or kitchen yarn or kitchen string or whatever it is and tie it back up and let it drain more. I already tasted it and it's delicious! Look at good boy Papa. <laughs> he loves snuggling up to pillows. And I do save the whey. It's out in the ice chest and it's very nutritious. There's a number of things you can do with it. So maybe in an upcoming video I'll share that with you too. Anyhow, I'm going to let it hang for another 24 hours and then I do the final steps. So you'll get to see that in tomorrow's video. So I need to go into town and take Papa with me and look around at my garden, make sure everything is watered. It's supposed to rain tonight, so ah, I hope it rains. I do hope it rains because i got to move some water around and do some stuff like that. Anyhow, uh, let me get going here. This is the veiled oyster mushroom that comes off this stump that I get them back every year. I can't believe they're still coming back. I can't imagine there's any more nutrition in there. And it looks like there may be another little tiny one coming up there. But, yeah, I'm going to cook this one up as well. Okay, look at that. A little bit different than the typical oyster mushrooms. These are much bigger. They're beefier. They burst out of a veil. You've heard me talk about them before. Um, the only thing that's a little bit harder about these is bugs get into the little ridges and lay eggs. I haven't seen any eggs or, you know, like larvae or anything like that. I did pick a few bugs out that were crawling around, but what I'll do when I get this inside, when I get ready to, uh, you know, process it for food consumption, I will put it down in a little bit of water and get all the little buggies out if there's any left. Look at it. Free food! And I left a good bit of it on the tree, so hopefully they will come back. I breaded, then battered them, and fried them up in a pan. The oyster mushrooms are on the left, and on the right are fritters that I just made with a leftover batter. Ooh, so good. The lettuce is sprouting! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Do we got any over here? Let's see. Yes, we do. We got one there. Oh, a whole bunch. Yes! 
The lettuce is sprouting! All the other plants are doing really, really well, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it rains. I have gone and watered some of the more tender plants. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go do what I got to do before it starts raining. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, wait a minute. That's all I got for you. See you in the next video. I feel weird if I don't do it in that order. <laughs>